Good evening and welcome to Australian Transformers Weekly. We are bringing you Transformers news from around the world with a couple of Australian accents. I don't, I don't know. I think the Australianism has sort of dropped off a little bit on the podcast lately. Uh, mate, we should try to throw in a few cobbers and uh, cobbers and maybe some stingray stings here and there. This is episode 228. We are recording live on... That was a terrible joke. Sorry. Friday, <laughs> Feb, February 26th, 2021. Yeah, in it's, this it's episode, part of course. Yeah, it, it is. In this episode, We'll be talking about Hasbro's Investor Day, revealing a few interesting news stories. That was that's news hot off the press for today. Uh, new masterpiece figure news, and one of us, I wonder who, has touched Unicron. All that and more is coming up this this week on this week's episode of Australian Transformers Weekly. <music> Welcome to the show. I'm Jason. Joining me this week, we have the faceless man who refuses to show his face on television because he's a dentist. Tony Kim joining me from probably the next suburb over, to be honest. I wouldn't know. How are you doing, Tony? <laughs> hello, hello. How are we all? I'm, I'm doing all right. It's that's, that's good. Now, we can't let this podcast continue without commenting about the mood lighting behind you there, Jace, because it does look very seductive, I should say. For lack of a better word, I, I have to say, if, I have to say that if a, if a red light looks seductive, um, <laughs> that might be a problem. That, but uh, yeah. well, they don't call it red light district for a reason, right? That's that's <laughs> that's the term. Well, I have less I have less of a district and more of a room. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Good think, to be here. I think I think that's uh, I think that is probably enough of that. Um, how, how's your week been? What's what's been happening? Um, well, you know, like I said last week, I, I've been struggling every time I walk past my local Kmart and Target, and uh, I've been doing some acquisitions that I actually just genuinely didn't need, and, uh, mm. and even braving the rain to do that in, uh, in good old Sydney, Jace. It hasn't rained that much this week. Yeah, but it's been raining. It's, it's still, it's enough, it's more than what it was before. And uh, I, will I mean, it's, about it's that. a non-zero number, but like it's not too bad. Anyway, <laughs> Max, how's it been over in over in Adelaide? Has it been raining over in Adelaide? It's been a mixed bag. It's just been Adelaide, really. <laughs> yep, but there's just nothing to speak of. It's, yeah, it, I've been existing. I well, I mean, like you know, that's that's is that news? I don't know. That, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, it sounds like one of us has had a far more exciting week than uh, than the others, uh, by which I mean me, which is ironic yeah. because like I've I've had a very quiet last couple of months. But uh, I got to uh, I got to play with and touch and half transform, but we didn't actually transform him last night. Uh, Unicron, the, the Haslabs release, Ooh, it's been exciting. Yeah, it's been in in my in my house this week, and it's gone at the moment because um, it was someone else's Unicron. I'm getting one this week. Uh, we will have it on. We will have it on display at Oz Comic Con, which is actually next weekend. Um, we'll be demonstrating at uh, Oz Comic Con at Sydney Olympic Park uh, and Sydney Showgrounds. So, if you're listening to the podcast, come along and come along and have a look. You can get you, get yourself a happy snap taken with Unicron, or um, we will have we'll have a Matrix uh, there as well, and uh, we'll have some friendly faces on the stand for you to come and come and talk to. Uh, there'll be some figures to see as well, and in fact, uh, I don't actually. You know, uh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll announce we'll announce a, a figure for raffle next week next week in the podcast because I don't actually have photographs of him here right now. Um, so uh, yeah, I've been I've been sort of just trying to rally a few troops and get things ready for for Oz Comic Con. It's been a while since we've uh, since we've attended a, a convention, so I'm a little bit rusty at this, but uh, yeah. And then last night, I spent a few hours in the studio at Toy Reel with uh, Haslabs Unicron. Um, we did an unboxing video of him, uh, so at least when mine arrives, I know what to expect. Yeah. Uh, we got him out of the box, got him up on his, um, got him up on his stand, and that my goodness, the stand is a thing of beauty in that box. It is massive, and it's pretty much the cent- the central thing in that display. You you definitely need it. You can actually you can actually put the figure in planet mode on the stand. And you can actually transform him without taking the stand. That's pretty. Uh, uh, yeah. that's, that's quite interesting. So, it means you don't have to sort of like put things down or lie things down where you know things might break or anything. It's it's pretty impressive. 
So, so Jace, he's boxed as the planet, or is he boxed as the robot? He's boxed as the planet, but okay. um, the, the rings, uh, the rings are sort of split into, I think, six pieces, uh, and so you have to you have to assemble the six pieces and then put the rings together and join them onto Got the it. main body. Um, right. And so, yeah. initial thoughts about the size when it when it came out of the box. What would your what was going through your mind as, as oh, it sort of came out? Goodness me, it's impressive. Um, yeah, if, you know what? I'm I'm going to I'm going to try to pull this up, and I think the the quickest way to the the quickest place to find this photo is going to be by bringing it up off my Twitter account. Um, but yeah, there we go. So if I do this and I put this over here, I've I'm, I've got a like a. I've got a half a screen share ready to go. So if I bring this in and go, give me that layout there. No, that's the wrong layout. I want this layout here. There we go. Uh, that Look at is, these guys. Uh, that's, that's the that's the group of us from from Toy Reel. Um, <laughs> Long time viewers of the podcast will recognise Mr. Mikey Siciliano on the uh, on the left there, uh, who uh, has grown a. a an unconvincing moustache, uh, and that's um, and he's not here to defend himself, so that's okay. Uh, that's myself on the right with uh, with Clinton Hahn, and on, on the far left is uh, Michael Crick, Michael Crick, who's the camera operator for Toy Reel. So um, they actually have a studio that's about three blocks from me. So like, if I want to do mm. unboxing and some some nice photos of things, then I'll be going in there now. Um, and of course, yeah, you can see the the, the Chaos Bringer dead center on the um in the middle with uh, the the. Um, on, on, the, on the stand, as I said, the stand is extremely impressive. And uh, just down below, you can see the, the head, because apparently, apparently you can't attach the head in planet mode, so it just has to sort of sit on display. Um, and then there's the Ark, and then there's the Galvatron and the Hot Rod figures as well. So yeah, um, he's been, it, it was a pretty fun, pretty fun night. It was a little bit harrowing trying to figure out how to get the fucking thing onto the, onto the stand in the first place. Like, the camera is rolling, we've unboxed Unicron, <laughs> we've unboxed Unicron and then we were just like how do we get it on the stand I don't know um, we, need to, we needed to sort of stop the camera look at the instructions and then figure out that the instructions don't actually tell you how to get it on either um, and so there's a point at which there's a YouTube video that shows the guy looking at the instructions and he will and when he gets to the instructions he stops and points at the points at the part that just says Laura and he's like no <laughs> to do this and there's like open open this up push this flap in and then lower it down onto the um lower it down onto it all so yeah um it does look amazing mm. it is it is it is pretty amazing it's very impressive that's the wrong layout again that's the one that i wanted um yeah it was good fun now clinton's been transforming here so, th so this one was mikey's there's a second one in the background that we didn't show you in the video and that's clinton's so clinton has been transforming his today and uh, is ready to take some awesome photos of the uh, the planet mode, uh, the, the, the robot mode as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing those because I haven't seen them yet. Uh, mm. And we are we are putting together a full on uh, unboxing video with some uh, pretty shots and pans across things. So uh, that will come out in the next few days, I think. Yeah, the the photo is uh, the way you guys are posed there. It actually looks like you've invented Unicron, and yeah. you're now showing no, off no, your no, new it, invention. It looks like it looks like we've killed him. And like we're just we're just we're like big game hunters, and it's like yeah, we killed us a planet. Yeah, and then you can put his head up on the wall because it's easily separable from the rest of the body. It's, well, it's all, if you look, it's already mounted. <laughs> it's, so right. it's okay. Yeah, uh, it's it's, it's Unicron com, comes with a free rhinoplasty uh, lesson. Uh, you can figure out how to warm out the head. It's all okay. Yeah, but yeah. So enough of Unicron. Mm. Uh, when I say enough, I just accidentally made it full screen. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably about time that we talk about some news. What do you guys think? Yes, please. We're going to move swiftly on and get to the news. Straight into news. Hasbro news. That will take us into some news. What news comes from Thy Yonder? Right, first item off this week for news. We have a new generation select figure was announced, and uh, he's a deep cut into Beast Wars history. He's, uh, oh, sorry, I say he's actually she. Um, she is Transmutate, uh, a reference to a, a a character from a single episode of the Beast Wars cartoon when um, a, a new character was born from a damaged spark and uh, was very very trusting and childlike, but with a very very dangerous sonic scream. Uh, that could deactivate any of the robots nearby. Now, 
in the cartoon, Transmutate befriended both uh, Rampage on the uh, Decepticon side and Silverball on the Autobot side, and uh, met an untimely end uh, at the end of at the end of the episode. But uh, has gone down in history as one of the more interesting characters in the um in the cartoon. Transmutate couldn't transform uh, and was released eventually as a builder figure um, in I think. 2000 2001 and so there's a lot of people a lot of people who are beast wars fans have the have the bath version of transmutate uh in their hands and so the generation select version is a repaint i don't think it's much of a retool well there's a the re, the head is retooled it's a repaint of um uh, paleotrix the the deluxe figure and so they've taken the yeah. black parts and turned it neon blue or you know bright aqua just to make it a little bit more in line with the uh, the character's colors in the show, and it kind of works for the character because you can you can pull apart Paleotrex and sort of attach attach different parts in different places. So the sort of uh, the the play the core play feature of it being sort of a builder figure is still there, but I don't really I I don't I don't personally feel a need to go for this because as I said it's a deep cut into Beast Wars history and it's something I'm not really into, but also it's I'm so. Just, I just, Ugly. I just don't really like the fossilizers. I'm sorry. So, it's however, just hard to look at. It, like, you know, the the more I the more I look at it, the more I can see why people who are into the character will go for this. But it's just, yeah, uh, it's just it's just not for me. Now, I say this as as not a fan of Beast Wars and not understanding any of the characters or having seen this particular character before. But what the hell is this? <laughs> what is this? It is so freaky, and this you look is at the face. CGI. Oh just, my god! This is the I, kind of I thing like Tim Burton would love. In all fairness, but okay, that doesn't make it exactly appealing as right. A figure. It's like a Nightmare it, Before Christmas type figure or something like that. It's uh, well, so so Tim it, so it is it. right because the the character was the character's spark was damaged when they were born in the show. And so sure. they are they are childlike and trusting of everyone, including both Autobot and Decepticon, and then mistrusting of people when they decide that they've been lied to and they've had enough. So like the the face the face design is very very accurate to the show. So oh. that's that's the thing that they've changed from Paleotrex, because Paleotrex's original head sculpt was the uh, the mace design that we got with Optimus Primal in the um, uh, in the Masterpiece range. But uh, the head design for this is much more uh, much more in line with the character's appearance in the show. And by sort of swapping the black color scheme from Paleotrex for the bright blue, it does sort of call to mind some of the uh, some of the aspects of the character in the show. It is just well, it's another re- it's another reason not to watch Beast Wars for me then, if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but it, it is but one episode of the show. I will, I will point out. Well, but, yeah. yeah, fair enough. But if this it's is okay. indicative, it's of okay. Quality. You weren't going to watch it anyway. <laughs> Correct. That's right. Um, question though: How popular was the character though, Jace, for one episode that they are uh, justified getting a single generation selects character? So I'll tell you. I'll tell you when this was rumored. So yeah. I, I run. I run like group buys and freight forwarding operations for yeah. TCCA members. When this was rumored, just people just started throwing their names onto a list. Like they just wanted the figure. When it was really? rumored, nobody knew what it was going to be. I think yeah. someone joked that it would be a repaint of a fossilizer. <laughs> <laughs> turns out, that, turns out, we were right. If that was a joke, um, well, you think so, about this. You think about how many weird little once-off, like animation error from G one figures there are. True, right? Like, if there's a market for that sort of thing, there's a, there's going to be a market for this from these source. It's true, and yeah. uh, you gotta you gotta realize also like there's a actually a massive undercurrent of Beast Wars fans in the in the Transformers fandom, and I I genuinely don't encounter it because I've you know by from whatever means I've surrounded myself with people who are just really into G one or the more modern reimaginings and stuff, and we're all pretty fam- we're all pretty forgiving of you know when the franchise reboots and reimagines itself. But there are fans, there are definitely fans who were kids in the 90s and they, you know, Beast Wars is their G1. So anything that references anything from a memorable episode of that show, they're there for. I've started, um, I've started asking a couple of, a couple of retailers around, around Asia if they're going to be doing it and, um, you know, can I buy a, a shitload of them? And yeah, and they've, they've just gone, how many do you need? I ordered a lot. 
So, like, there's definitely demand out there mm. for, for the character. The retailers know that there's going to be demand for it as well. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I feel, I feel like we're in the minority and that we're not not particularly interested. <laughs> I'm kind of okay with that. You know, in keeping I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that as well. Yeah. But in keeping positive, the one thing I will say about this, there is a description in the, on the screen here that the listeners can't see, but uh, it, ref, it refers to, though Transmutate cannot convert in the show, this figure converts from robot to beast mode in 32 steps. So someone's done the engineering, right? As in getting paleo tricks and, and trying to link it to, you know, the figure of, um, of, of Transmutate, uh, but actually done the hard work to actually link those two together and make this a sellable toy. So I will say that is a, um, a positive thing. I think that's quite interesting that they did that. Hmm. I think it's just someone in the marketing department sitting down and writing it. But yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Generation Select. Uh, I was going to say Gen Select's Paleo Tricks. Uh, Gen Select's Transmutate <laughs> is due for release around July, August, depending on who you talk to. Uh, I think it will turn up in Hong Kong, maybe around May, June, because things seem to come to Hong Kong a little bit ahead of their Western release. Mm. Uh, it is up for pre-order at EB Games for $40 because it is a deluxe figure. So that's uh, about that's about uh, the, the going rate for a Gen Select Deluxe. Um, it is only the second Gen Select figure that we've seen announced for this year. And there's a there's a good few months between Deep Cover, which we, we talked about last week having just arrived, and August. So I feel like there might be a couple more Gen Select figures that will come out and fill that gap in the meantime. Mm. Maybe they're just not ready to talk about yet. We are due some toy reveals, I think, because uh, Toy Fair has... Toy Fair would have been on this weekend, but uh, because it got cancelled because of COVID, like everything else, um, Toy Fair itself is happening later in the year now, but the reveals that Hasbro would be doing around this time, they've got to go somewhere, and so... Hasbro has been doing a few Fan First Friday events the last few weeks. Thought there'd be a Transformers one this weekend, but there's not. So maybe there'll be something next week. We might mm. we might hear something about upcoming Kingdom releases or um, the next wave of Studio Series 86. We're, we're due to hear about all of these things. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed indeed. Let's move on. Uh, some other some other figure news that came out this week. There is a brand new Masterpiece Optimus Prime out there. <laughs> At least it's coming. Oh. Uh, it's not out there yet. But, uh, so MPM 12 was officially announced this week. In fact, it was just last night. Uh, he is a masterpiece representation of Optimus Prime from the Bumblebee movie. Sort of. Um, he does. He does look like. Uh, he does look more like the uh, more like the masterpiece Bumblebee. Uh, more like Bumblebee Prime than he doesn't. But there's also quite a lot of uh, there's quite a lot of detail in this figure that wasn't on the character on screen, and he also doesn't actually transform into the same vehicle mode. <laughs> so it is a it is it is attracting a bit of criticism around the yeah. uh, around the scene. Um, he does, as you can see, he does have a matrix. It's a it's a bit of a blocky matrix, unlike any matrix that we've we've uh, seen in the past. They usually have a fairly nice curve on them. Um, I gotta, I, I gotta say, like the more I look at this figure, the more I like it for the the detail that's present on it. And there's a lot of there's a lot of different colours on different surfaces, but I also honestly feel that like Bumblebee came out in uh, was it 2017 or was it 2018? 18, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Bumblebee came out in 2018. It's now 2021. They're not going to revisit that look of Optimus Prime, like. It, <laughs> What a, there's Doug having you say. See, Doug, Doug agrees with me. They're not going to revisit <laughs> this look of Optimus Prime. See? Um, and so, <laughs> when... So, why keep going back... Why keep going back to the well? Like, they, they had a really well-received studio series figure. And it's now been, you know, a good couple of years since that figure came out as well. And now we've got a masterpiece version of that figure. But it, 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 that's going to be a one-off. It's, it, it's not really going to appear again in, in the movies. Yeah, I mean, you could make the argument the same thing for the the studio series figures that you know <clears throat> were linked to some of the Bay, you know, linked to the Bay movies that you know they came out years and years ago, but we're still drip, getting drip fed a couple of those uh, as well. But but just on this figure, Jace, I, I <clears throat> I'm really struggling with this. I I part of me really wants to like it because it's it, it's got all the I, basics. I, I want to like it as well. Yeah, like, yeah. I got to be honest. I want to like it more than I do. <laughs> 
correct. That's exactly how I feel. And so I'm looking at that that initial photo that you showed of the the in robot mode. And uh, go back one. Oh, back another one. Sorry. Hmm. Yeah. And so you look at this. Yeah, this one here. There is something a little off about this figure, and, and I was trying to put my finger on it. And I thought, if you look at the helmet, right, the ears, they're very mm. elongated, almost like Batman style. <laughs> Batman style ears I'm on, on Optimus Prime. <laughs> Where is he? And then I'm, you look pr- at I'm the, Prime Man. <laughs> But then, and then you look at the exhaust pipes, right? And they're they got that silly sort of bend in them as well. So it's almost like they've tried to take a, a more artistic approach to designing this figure, which is, I guess, it's fine, right? But it it's it's one step too far from what I think Prime should be. But also, it looks nothing like the Prime that's in the actual movie that this uh, figure is meant to be based on. So you, you've you've deviated so it's, too it's far. Not, it's, not, it's not that he looks well, nothing like him, but it's just it's, it's, it deviates from it. Uh, well, the thing far. is, it deviates in weird little ways in which I don't think it needs to. Exactly. You know, stuff like having these giant forearms, where you know you can see in-depth processes going on in the transformation across the rest of a figure, but the forearms just aren't transforming at all. Or yes. you can see the knees are wildly out of position. Whereas the, the proportions on the rest of the figure look pretty good. Um, you know, the fact that they've got all this colouring and detail in certain areas, but then the the actual palettes of the blues and the reds are just way off from the movie itself. It's like it, they've got this potential here. You know, they obviously know what they're doing, but there's just enough little things here and there that throw off the entire product. Yes. Spot on. That's exactly how I feel. And then even when you look at the the alt mode and how boxy that actually looks, it, it's it's like some kid has just drawn... It's like someone said to the kid, hey, draw a picture of what you think Optimus Prime should look like and then we'll make a toy out of it, like a Build-A-Bear. Let's build a Prime. <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> it's like... And he's just drawn a lot of squares, very angular, and uh, he's, he's, he's bent the little uh, the exhaust pipes because, you know, he didn't have an eraser and he was just colouring in. No, and, the, you know, the exhaust pipes are bent because he's going really fast. There you go. There you go. Yeah. But it just looks so boxy in the alt mode too. So that's, you know, echoing what Max was saying, there's just still something missing from this that's just not quite right. Yeah, it's, it's close, but it's not quite right. Uh, yeah. I, look, I've I got to be honest, as we're, as we're sort of flashing up some of the photos on screen, like, I like it more and more, but okay. I don't think I can bring myself to buy it. <laughs> yeah, like, there's no way I'm spending like, like, money I, I, because there's better options. Yeah, like, yeah. You can so respect we'll talk, we'll talk, what it we'll does. Talk about, we'll talk about that in a minute. But there's, like, there's so much happening in the leg apparatus and the blue, the, the blue that makes up the, uh, the the character's robot mode legs, like there's so much, there's so many details and surfaces on there. And mm. it's sort of, there's, there's enough detail on, on that that like it doesn't really go away in alt mode either. Like you can still see, you can still see a bunch of polygons sitting on his, uh, sitting yeah. on his legs behind that, uh, behind the, uh, the, the cab there. So it's not, it's not especially well disguised. I don't think that detail was there on the on the on-screen model, but we couldn't tell because there was a trailer at this point, which does bring us to the same old question: Where's the trailer? <laughs> people have people have freaked out at being asked to pay seventy nine dollars for a G one Optimus cab with no trailer. Mm-hmm. Where's the trailer for this one? And <laughs> everyone's just looking at it, just going, mm, "No, the robot mode's a bit off." Blah, blah. No, where's the trailer? <laughs> no, really. Correct. Great, great question. You know, in the interest of staying positive again uh, on this, the one thing I noticed about it, uh, I don't know if you've got it on here, Jace, but the price for this thing, I think it was around 800 Hong Kong dollars, which is yeah, roughly yeah, 130 Yeah, 120 $130, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, so from a price perspective, if you do want this, in my opinion, hunk of junk, uh, you know, it's a, it's a relatively cheaper masterpiece option, I guess, uh, if, you, if you're interested. Uh, so the yeah, price is a good thing. As 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 Max started saying, they cut him off before. Sorry, like if you if you want a Bumblebee Optimus Prime, you've been well served for options over the mm. years, and you kind of don't need this because if you want a Bumblebee Prime, you probably already have one, and there are better third party options than what Hasbro's served up in this MPM figure. So, 
I just I, 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 I just I, I struggle to I struggle to think you know who is this who is this going for I mean like there's going to be tons of people who'll buy it because it's an, it's a movie masterpiece but it's just it's not it's not for me yeah who do you, who I say do you this guys as someone, think? well I say this as someone who actually has SS38 up on the shelf as well right like I I was looking forward to this when it was rumored a couple of weeks ago. I thought, wow, that's going to be great. I can I can upgrade that SS38 because there's a couple of things that bug me about it. No. Nah, nah, it stays up, stays up there and I'm basically just going to ignore the rest of the, the Bumblebee characters <laughs> anyway. Because I'm sitting here wondering, who is the target market for this figure? Is it fans of the Bumblebee movie? Because if it is, you're not getting an accurate representation of what Prime looked like there. Is it just masterpiece fans looking for i don't know something a little quirky then then okay probably but i would imagine that's a bit of a subset of the main transformers collecting group but i might be completely wrong um but max i'm just wondering because the last time you were on the podcast you you had a massive uh third party prime uh that, that was on your shelf i mean what you know how would that sort of compare to uh to what's on the screen here do you think honestly i can i'll pull out the shelf just now um I honestly, I reckon it's better. <laughs> yeah, um, like I, I just think it's better. Um, yeah, right. Fair like, enough. Too. Maybe yeah. I know Hasbro does have a habit of doing shit out of stock photography, right? And often they yeah. sort of, um, you know, they let their engineers down in that regard because yeah. often there's some really good stuff coming out and they just not they, they don't know how to show it. Um, yeah. So no, I'll reserve final judgment until we start to get in hand picks, but from what I can see of what they've put out, it's, there's no comparison. Yeah, uh, and okay. I don't, I don't, I haven't seen many of the other um, third party options from Bumblebee Prime in person. But honestly, like I've seen the toy one in person, and just looking at images of the others as well, I don't think the official masterpiece holds a candle to any of them. It's just. Mm. Yeah, there's no comparison. Yeah, I, I instantly what, like yours a lot more just seeing it on screen. <laughs> what, yeah, what, what you is, can see what, what I mean about like, the colours. What yeah. is the figure that you're holding there? This is the Wei Zhang version. So this is like... Mm-hmm. The people say it's a knockoff, but I, I don't actually think it is. Like, There's maybe some shared parts, but it feels I think very... It's, I think it's, a, it, it's, a, it's, it's generally classed as an oversized KO. Mm. Yeah, there's just yeah. bugger all actual shared parts in this. Yeah. He looks awesome, but yeah, like this. This is this is just one example, though. You go to, you know, the Toy World, or even one of the more simplistic ones like Aoi Mech or something. Actually, maybe mm. not that much, but you know, the other options out there. Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, it just absolutely dwarf what the masterpiece yeah. is. Mm. And yeah, I think it's a shame. It's such a it's a really good design. So you kind of want to you want to see it be done justice, correct? Yeah, I, like I do want to see it be done justice, but hey, I don't think this is it. But also, as time goes on, like I kind of I don't really care as uh, as much for, I, I don't, yeah, I don't I don't really care as much for um what's going to happen to you know the Bumblebee Prime design. We do have a question from the uh, from the uh, the from the uh, chat from the comments Billy Ho has asked was there an MPM figure that you were hoping for instead of Prime no is the answer from me uh, I like it was pretty obvious that this was going to be Prime uh, because it, it leaked a couple of weeks ago um, so yeah there's only I one answer to this question Jace and, and that is Jazz, yeah. well, I, mean, jazz. Just, I would have they've, taken they've just released a movie masterpiece Jazz <laughs> oh the movie master. oh sorry <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I would have taken any other character from, from the movie. You you would you would have liked Shadow or Dropkick as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mm-hmm. obviously transformation is a bit hard, which is why we haven't seen too much in the way of toys for those. But even just do what the Deluxes did, you know, and have say like just have them with one alt mode and fudge it yeah, out. I think I was going to really complain. I, you know, I, I guess, mate, I guess doing. Choice. Yeah, I'm not that into Blitzwing because he's only had five minutes of screen time, right? So, like, I don't, I don't want a masterpiece figure of that. But uh, Shatter and Dropkick would be a problem, I think, because Takara has really avoided doing triple changes for masterpieces. So, um, bringing in either of those two, like you said, you, you sort of have to do what the Deluxe is doing: pick one alt mode or um, try and do your first triple changer. Mm. All right, let's move on. 
Uh, we this is not the only masterpiece news that we have this week. Uh, the we ha- we have heard that there is a masterpiece version of Skids coming, and uh, we do we do actually finally have some prototype images of him now. This uh, this came out because of um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna scroll my page up there to avoid that person's animated uh, animated avatar. That's really annoying me. <laughs> um, so uh, we we've seen the wireframes a while a while a while back. I think Transformers PR Twitter account tweeted them out on uh, January first, saying, "Hey, this is coming this year." And so here we are, a couple of months later, and we've got some some grey prototype images now. Skids is looking very much like an older style masterpiece. There's less there's less of the cartoon accuracy on here, and dare I say there's a little bit more real world accuracy. And it's possibly because this uh, this figure, this release of this figure, is being looked upon very closely by Honda uh, because the uh, Skids Zolt mode is actually a um, uh, what is it? A, a, Hon- a Honda City Turbo, uh, and it's actually an anniversary year for for that for that uh, vehicle. So Honda is actually the ones who tweeted out these images, not Takara, and they said, "Yeah, look what we're doing with uh, with Takara for the the anniversary of the of the City Turbo." Um, so if we go and look at the the alt mode there, that's a that's a really it's a really nice it's a really really realistic looking alt mode. Um, I mean it's it's still a prototype, so it's clearly held together by you know glue and glue and sticky tape, but um, yeah, I'm 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 actually I'm actually really a lot more interested in this figure now than I thought I was going to be. What 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 do you guys think of it, uh, Max? Are you are you, inter- are you into masterpiece skids? Oh, I I feel like I shouldn't be spending money on masterpieces at the moment, but he looks he looks really good. <laughs> yeah, I have fi- just think about everything I said about that prime and just the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like the look of this. It feels, I don't know. It feels like it's not overdoing things so far. Like, yeah, it feels, like it, it feels I'm, pretty not, I'm not against overdoing things, you know, because like some when masterpiece takes takes risks, they generally nail it. But I don't know. There's something quite appealing about just this very muted look to a figure. Hmm. Or it's like, yeah, it's not over top. It's like, it's just, yeah, here's skids. There you go. Tony. I like it. Like, I, I like the design of it. I like how um, the, it's, there's clearly a lot of detail you can see in this mold, right, that they've put into mm. the thing. Uh, and it's also because it's quite an obscure character that I think, you know, only appeared in like two episodes tops of the original cartoon. Um, but in the previous photo there, Jace, uh, in his um, alt mode, I- I've forgotten how daggy <laughs> is his, his car mode. It, 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 like. is a, it is a daggy car, isn't it? <laughs> this, is, this is a soccer mum car, right? As mm. She's driving the kids to, uh, to soccer, dropping them off, and then, you know, it's a Tarago type, <laughs> type vehicle. And then she's going to go and get a latte or something, you know, in the eastern suburbs. So that's mm-hmm. what she's going to yeah. do. And she's going to use skids to do it. So Is, is, is skids actually the best disguise for a robot in disguise that we've seen like i mean like i mean we've seen fucking f1 cars we've seen ufos we've seen tractor trailers we've seen vws but like isn't this like the the most inconspicuous transformer ever (laughs) it is the people mover that's right yeah yeah that makes perfect sense the people mover that is not moving people because he's a giant (laughs) robot he's too busy too busy moving robots and fighting bad robots to move people I do love the robot mode, though. After having taken the piss out of the uh, the car mode, it does look quite nice. He does. He does. He does look great. I'm looking forward to him. I will be ordering this when he uh, gets officially announced. So, is he going back to my previous mistake about not having a masterpiece movie jazz? uh, There is definitely not a masterpiece jazz, and uh, and I think some of the um, commentary that came out when this was originally announced for Skids was that how can we get a Skids first? and not have a jazz before that because <laughs> i think a lot of people obviously have a good masterpiece collection of g1 season one and uh skids doesn't really kind of fit the mold in that regard yeah no it's it, it, look, it's true and i mean the answer has always been that it's about licensing right they need to they need to license that alt mode although given that they've just released a fairly g1 accurate jazz without a license yeah. in the studio series 86 line 
one does wonder if that might leave the uh, leave the door open for them to do something similar in Masterpiece. Yeah, I was wondering how they got away with SS eighty six because it's so close to a push. But, the, but yeah. that's that's the thing. That's the way that copyright works, right? Like all they need mm. is a couple of things that are different, and that's all they've ever yeah. needed. Yeah, um, true. So yeah. Let's move on. There's a couple of quick stories that we're going to go through before we start talking about um, the movie and TV series news, and then we'll mm. probably have to call it a night. Um, first of all, there does appear to be vintage Beast Wars figures looking for a reissue this year. These things have shown up in the Walmart computer system in the in the US, and they've got a code of uh, Trajan, which is Transformers Generations, BW for Beast Wars. Now... The the War for Cybertron trilogy has been W F C S E or K. That's not not present in either of these codes. It's Trigen B W, Beast Wars Vintage Optimus Primal, Vintage T Rex Megatron, Vintage Rat Trap, and Vintage Cheetor. Mm. Now, these are not cheap figures either. Um, Optimus and Megatron are both fifty dollars each, and so it seems likely that these are not going to be reissues of their Kingdom toys because they are different size classes in Kingdom, so the $50 price point wouldn't make much sense for both of them. That means it's got to be something else, which um, I, I feel like they might hope to do maybe a release of the sort of the lesser-known mold or maybe one of the Transmetals or something like that because I feel it's kind of weird to release a modern Optimus Primal in the first half of the year and then yeah. release the vintage one as you get sort of later in the year like, like why did i just buy why did i just buy your modern update if you're just going to re-release and give me the nostalgia hit of the original toy coming out mm -hmm. um so i think I, I think there'll be something there'll be something about these um we have seen walmart do a lot of g1 reissues over the last four or five years and so it's nice to see them turn their attention to something else that's having an anniversary year um <laughs> The Walmart reissues have come out in various territories around the world, and they they are starting to come out here. They're not really they're not really Walmart reissues anymore. Uh, some of them are turning up at Kmart, but you know, obviously, it might be it might be a while before these turn up here. We'll see how they go. Um, this is essentially their. I was going to say this is essentially their equivalent of the G one reissues, right? You know, yeah. we got Soundwave and um, Blaster and and those guys. So I think there's there'll, def there'll definitely be a market for it. Um, if you if you know if the G one reissues are any indication about how how quickly nostalgia can help you sell a product, <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Matt, Max, are you interested in Vintage Beast Wars? I have not watched Beast Wars. Not so yeah, another one. Obviously, this is right on my alley. No, <laughs> this is this is this is this is, this is kind of a beast centric episode like, of the podcast. But uh, yeah, yeah, none of us are particularly feel... Beast Wars fans drastically unqualified to talk about this sort of stuff. <laughs> no, come and join the club, mate. <laughs> so it might be a we light need Brad year. and Bradley. Yeah. It might be a light year for purchases for, for some of us when it comes to these reissues and stuff, but that's fine. The, like, it, the great thing about Transformers is that if you're not into what's, what, what's been released now, just give it six months and see what comes out. So, yeah. <laughs> One other small tidbit, and I think this this is mainly a correction because I think we ran with this story earlier in the year. Uh, Kingdom has been given a release month of Netflix uh, by Netflix of July 2021. It had been previously reported because someone updated a wiki page which generated a news headline which was then referenced by the wiki page that it was going to come out on the 26th of May. Would have been very happy for that because that's my birthday. But uh, <laughs> Netflix has decided to take my birthday present away and uh, they will be releasing my birthday present in the wrong month of July. Um, so we don't quite know when in July, but uh, as we get closer to July, I'm sure they will release a. Uh, they'll give us an update. So you know what I was really hoping this article would be, hmm? Jace. I was. We you know. I was really hoping this article would be. It would be that uh, Netflix has decided to sack the existing voice cast of uh, uh, Kingdom and replace uh, them with Paul, uh, Peter Cullen and uh, Frank Welker. That would Peter be Cullen amazing. Peter Cullen and Frank Welker can just do all the voices. Yeah, exactly. Do everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's coming a two man production. It will kill both of them, but yeah, <laughs> it'd be worth it. <laughs> no, it won't. It would be worth it for the dross that we're going to see when Kingdom comes out. Jesus. Yeah, when Kingdom comes, there we go. We're going to move on. There's a bit of Transformers movie news that's come out of Hasbro's investor call today, um, which. They have confirmed a couple of things. One, uh, the the producer who won't die, Lorenzo de Bonaventura, <laughs> is returning 
for whatever whatever comes next in the movie franchise. Um, <laughs> Just stop talking. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. like, Sorry, like, shut up. Think about over the over the past few years since the last night, right? Yeah. How many different things has this bloke said about what the future of a franchise is going to be? Mate, oh, do you remember when he talked about like the he, writers' he, room? Because we've got a big yeah. writers' room. It's going to be huge. Yeah, there's a Beast Wars movie. Oh, it's we've going to be one. an animated prequel. Oh, it's going to we've, be. We, we, we've got binders full of writers. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... This guy won't shut up, will he? It, it's crazy. Um, so, so in, in the news of today, um, he hasn't said anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hasbro has announced that uh, they do have two feature films or feature length films that might not be cinema releases uh ready to go at the same time so the one one that we know about is uh the director is stephen capel jr uh and uh that will be a fresh vision that will launch a new trajectory for the franchise we have a bit more of a rumor about that one that we'll talk about in a minute the other one we don't know too much about it's a feature length film that will be animated and it's directed by josh cooley who directed toy story 4 uh which was a better received better received uh a better Toy Story sequel than it had any right to be. It was great. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm interested. I'm interested more in the animated version than um, than the live action one, to be honest. But let's talk a little bit about the live action one because there's there's a big rumor that came out a, couple, a week or two ago called Transformers Beast Alliance, which apparently says it takes place in the Bumblebee timeline. So maybe that prime will be back. Will be set in the 1990s. The film will have a flavor of a heist film which is a little bit confusing for me that will span from brooklyn to south america well now you're sure they didn't get the synopsis mixed up with the next fast and the furious film i, I was <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna suggest that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, they, it's, like the, it's like they've, they've printed the they've printed the one sheet out and it's got the it's got the the first line and then it's accidentally printed the synopsis from a different movie and someone's just gone <laughs> yep and read it on um, yeah, it's yep. it's it's the rumor. So if it's a 1990s set, uh, set like I, I like the idea that it might be set in the 90s because it follows the 80s setting of um, the 80s setting of uh, of the Bumblebee movie, and it sort of it sort of lets them do sort of a, a bit of an Ekman thing where they can sort of have a movie that's set in each era with sort of a, a major event that happens. But uh, like. I kind of don't. I kind of don't care. Like, I'm, I, I kind of don't care because, on the one hand, I'm going to go see it anyway, regardless mm. of what, regardless of what what goes on. So, like, my opinion really doesn't matter. Um, but on the other hand, like, I, I would like it to not be stupid. I, yeah, I, I, that's about it, really. Yeah, I'd like it to be that's good. Fine. I'm like, you know, I, I'll laugh about it now, but in all honesty, I'm not. I'm taking this use of a grain of salt. Because of how many different rumors we've heard over the past few years. That's true. Remember, so it once, is a rumor. Once something starts filming or drops a trailer, then start fi- forming some opinions. For now, there are movies coming out at some time mm. in the future. Yeah. That's that sounds it. fair. That's that's probably that's probably a good that's probably a good time for a, a good idea for us to uh, then move on to the next story because uh, we don't really know too much about the movies, but we will eventually, eh? No one said anything, so I'm going to move on to the next story, uh, which is um, something else that I'd like to, I would like to sort of throw out as a bit of a question. Right? Um, mm. We've been we've been pretty down on we've been pretty down on the Netflix series, uh, so Siege and Earthrise, the the War for Cybertron trilogy that we, that's come out, which does sort of beg the question now. In the announced call, in the the investor call today, Hasbro announced that they are working on two. Transformers animated series. Now, those are animated series featuring Transformers. They're not. There's not a revival of Transformers animated, the series that we all know and love, uh, coming unfortunately. But um, one series is a Botbots, uh, a Botbots uh, series, and the other is a, a sort of an, an unspecified animated comedy series that's coming to Botbots is going to Netflix, and the comedy series is going to Nickelodeon. Is this what you want to see in a Transformers series? I think I think I know the answer, but let let, let let's go, Tony. Uh, un- unleash unleash your wrath. Look, you can just tell by this picture here that the audience they're going for is not the audience that buys the toys. Let's put it that way, or except in the case of Botbots. But I feel like there's a lot of adults that buy Botbots as well. And Jace, I think 
you might be guilty of that, right? You're the number one acquirer I, of bot bots in Australia. I, I, I do have a lot of bot bots. I, I object to the use of the word guilty, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like the idea, though, that there are um, these animated properties that are coming out because it obviously shows that Hasbro are thinking of, um, you know, that there's still life left in the brand. And that's that's important because it means that there'll be more toys to come down the down the pipe. Um, just looking at these these pictures though of this bot bot Netflix show, I'm just thinking, you know what? It's actually it looks like it could be fun, but it'll just be disposable. You know, it won't be something that I'll need to to rewatch. That's I might actually, check it out. I, I, I think I think that's kind of all you can really hope for it to be, right? So if it's going to be something, if it's if it's really going to be aimed at kids, it's not going to be aimed mm. at the adults. It'll be something that the kids might watch again and again, and yeah, like they sure. might they might think that this this scene here is hilarious and want to watch it again and again. Where it's just like, oh, okay, um, what we so what we've got on screen? There's two stills. I think oh, there's actually a few that have been released. Um, or actually, this looks like it's a screen cap of uh, of possibly an animation that was shown from the Investor Day. Um, the the Bot Bots series is set in a mall where the Bot Bots accidentally reveal themselves to a security guard in the mall and uh, then wackiness, wackiness ensues. And so uh, I, I sort of appreciate that, I, I sort of appreciate that there's a realistic, a realistic background setting. So like they've gone out and they've designed a mall and then they're, they're doing sort of like hand-drawn animation on top of that. And they're going to have to mix those in. Like, They've definitely not gone out and filmed this in a mall because if you look at the... There's a very Cybertronian design to this pizza shop um, yep. behind us here. And on the and on the, the drink dispenser that we just saw, there's uh, that design again. Like, there's no labelling of the drinks that come out of the machine. So, like, there's, some, there's possibly something going on there. But I like the fact that it looks a little bit more realistic and it's, it's more realistically lit than you would expect for a cartoon. So, um it could it could be it could be interesting. It could be fun. Remember, there's no factions in bot bots either. Um, so like, it's you know, just anarchy. yeah, yeah, it's ba- <laughs> it is basically anarchy. And I also wonder if we. I also wonder if like the first episode of the show is just going to have like Optimus Prime and Megatron just dumping the bot bots in the mall and just like shaking their heads and walking off or something. But yeah, that, that would that would be quite funny. <laughs> you know, I uh, the other description of the. Um... Actually, have we touched on the description of the other animated show, Jace? Uh, no, we haven't. Okay. Um, but I, I, I'll, I'll bring it up. Um, so, Nickelodeon and Entertainment One—that's Hasbro's um, Hasbro's uh, you know, production company. It says in, this, in the action comedy series, a new species of Transformers, which sounds a lot like BotBots when this came out this morning. That's exactly what I thought. A yeah, that's species it's of Transformers must find their place and purpose among Autobots, Decepticons, and the human family that adopts them. The 26th episode, oh my god, Half Hour <laughs> Series <laughs> will premiere exclusively on Nickelodeon in the US before rolling out internationally. Is that like how they stuck the word roll out in there? Um, it doesn't really it doesn't really give us much um there's a couple of quotes further down the article it says as soon as i read the creative concept which at its core is about family uh i knew we absolutely had to tell this story so okay uh, like this person this person thinks it's going to be amazing um and it says the, the series is new series is a fresh creative take on the brand spoken by someone who's not seen the spec for the bot pots cartoon uh which will excite <laughs> longtime fans around the world and soon to be fans alike all being introduced to the robots in disguise by an A-list creative team. Okay, like we'll we'll, we'll see we'll see how it goes. It's not going to be uh, like it's it's a comedy, right? Like maybe it will actually be fall. Maybe it will actually be fall down funny. Maybe it'll be lovely. Like we'll see. What do you, what do you think the new species of Transformers is going to be? It's just going to be Beast, isn't it? Like I don't think it can be Beast. Like, well, because like, it'd be like I don't know. It'd turn into like the pet dog or something. Yeah, so so like if it's because, if it's because in that's more animals, animals, right? like yeah, well like a primal turns into an actual size gorilla. You know, stuff like that like Yeah, so a human so a human it'd be is not going to adopt a turn into primal. what the, I'm sure it's like it's it's going to be set in America. You just put a setting in Florida. You know, I'm sure someone down there owns a gorilla. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um <laughs> I, I so I'm actually just I'm 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 staggered by the number of episodes. 
<laughs> yeah, 26 episodes. That, that is half an hour. That is unheard of. Um, and that is unheard of these days. Like that's a lot of content. I do wonder if it might. I do wonder if it might be split over a couple of seasons. Like there might be two thirteen episode seasons in there or something. So they haven't. They haven't really talked about that breakdown or anything. That and like the, There's a. There's. A, the the plot is not really. That's not much of a plot to go on, right? So there's plenty of there's plenty of opportunity for, you know, conflagrations and things going on. But bearing in mind that it is a kids show on Nickelodeon, right? Although. Let's be fair. Like Nickelodeon doesn't necessarily have um, doesn't necessarily have just things aimed at kids. Like you know they've also done Avatar and The Legend of Korra. So Adventure Time, which was amazing. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's right. So may, maybe this is maybe this is less less aimed at kids, and it might actually might generally be full of belly laughs for us. Who knows? Jace, there's so well, much. Considering wrong with the last, the like, sorry. No, no, you go, Max. Sorry. You guys just have to, you know, considering the quality of Doug agrees. The, the last couple of <laughs> animated shows that we've got have been ostensibly like adult oriented, and yep. unfortunately, they've just been kind of shit. Um, so you know, as, as much as I'm sure people were looking forward to that direction and wanting it to and wanting the franchise to go that way, just never really stuck the landing. Um, mm. at least in my opinion, you know, I know people differ, but. I don't think they've nailed a mature series in the same way that they've made, um, you know, sort of more family oriented series that have worked quite well. And that, you know, people have been able to, and have been targeted towards kids, but the older fans have still been able to appreciate. Mm. Um, So I'm just thinking maybe this might be the best bet for the time being, just because, I, I don't think the current direction of Transformers animation is really working. I think I think that, I think that's fair. Maybe maybe they have sort of realised, hey, there's you know the the adult oriented shows sort of not not landing, so maybe let's try something else. I'm look, I'm fine with them trying something else. Um, it I, it either works or it doesn't. And as as I said, if you don't like it, then you know there's another there's another thing for you to watch later on. Um, I actually think it's really interesting seeing major franchises branch out suddenly in such a big way like star wars has got multiple series coming in the next couple of years star trek has three or four projects on the go in fact star trek star trek's got what it's got discovery it's got picard it's got lower decks there's going to be a section 31 show there's going to be strange new world that's at least five star trek shows in production at the same time so if there's let's let's say that there's going to be something else adult oriented after um and we'll say adult oriented even though um the war for cybertron is not very adult oriented um let's say there'll be something adult oriented after that so that's three um it's in fact it's four right because cyberverse is not going away cyberverse um cyberverse has two new movies coming out this year and it's possible that they'll bring it back for more after that because I mean, frankly i want to i want to see more cyberverse i'm happy for that um so that that's in fact if we're really counting, if we're really counting shows, then let's say that's War for Cybertron. Uh, it's Bot Bots. It's um, we didn't actually get a name for for this one. It's the Nick Show. It's Cyberverse. It's also Rescue Bots Academy as well. So we're up to five series, possibly in simultaneous production for Transformers as well. Like this could actually be this can actually be a, a you know a big opportunity to really branch out the franchise. Not to mention yeah, not to mention that, and- the movies that are underway as well. Yeah, <clears throat> and and maybe one of the shows will hit. You know, like one of the, it. This is like take that, the dartboard approach. I, I think it's very likely that several of the shows will hit their target market, right? Like yes, this doesn't but, sound like it's yeah. really going to be for us, but you never know. Like kids watching it on Nickelodeon might love it. Same thing yeah. with Botbots. In fact, you know, Botbots is very likely to be hilarious as well. But you know, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that is enough news, I think. Um, suffice to say, there's there's gonna, there's going to be more about these things uh, coming soon. <laughs> Let's talk about acquisitions. Uh, we've got Bravo. about we've, we've got about five minutes left for the show, so let, let's talk about acquisitions. What are, what have we got in our hands on this week, Max? What are you okay? Um, so I speaking of the Bumblebee movie and decent figures based upon that, I uh, recently picked up. Three zero Soundwave. Wow, that looks amazing! Um, that looks yeah, so I'll much just, better than the Masterpiece Prime. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll just say right off the bat, buy this thing. It's 
absolutely incredible. Like I, I didn't think they would be able to top their Bumblebee just in terms of creating something that functions as a figure, but it genuinely feels like a piece of art. But they've yeah, that, they've just hit it at the park. I I have no complaints whatsoever. Uh, Ravage, I do have a little bit of complaints in that he moves in one direction. Like, there is no lateral movement whatsoever. The legs don't move outwards. The head doesn't turn side to side. Torso doesn't twist at all. He's saying, he's saying Ravage is G1 accurate. Yeah, basically. he's Ravage is very limited in what he can do. And I, I wouldn't really have an issue with that because he does transform surprisingly well for, a, for, for like, a licensed piece. And the detail is... Oh, it's just it's seriously impressive, but... I don't know. I feel like Soundwave sets such a high standard and that standard is reflected across their Bumblebee release as well that I feel like you could have done something here. You know, considering like the fact that Ravage is ostensibly the only Decepticon who gets named in the movie, <laughs> I feel like you could have given him a bit more love. Fair enough. So. Um, yeah. Soundwave himself, though, it's just, oh, it's just out of perfection. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so what's what's one of these guys worth? Because, like, frankly, I'm having figures. It's three hundred dollars, but yeah, that's all right. So it's it's the only figure I've bought in the past couple of months, really. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel very happy with that because you know it's not like I'm buying a couple of the like figures every month and just chucking them on the shelf, right? This thing, I feel very. You know, it's, it's, it sits in the detail yes, there, on. and it it feels like it, it's taken pride of place. It's a display piece. You know, um, yeah. it, it, it's a genuine work of art. There's, you, you can tell with something like this that there's serious love put into it. Now, Max, just to clarify, this is a statue that doesn't transform, yeah? Uh, so, no, it's not a statue. It's, you know, fully articulated. Oh, everything. sorry, sorry. But it doesn't transform? It's an no. action monster. Um, it's an action yeah. monster, yeah. yeah. So, okay. which I, I don't really mind because... No, it looks fantastic. It looks fantastic, yeah. And it just it's means totally they're worth it. completely now those proportions, like... Yeah. He has his, his real sort of natural flow yep. to the sculpt where no, so no matter how you pose him, he looks very natural in it. And he just holds in perfect position. Like, this is a big, chunky figure, you know, full of die He's a, ch he's a chunky boy is what you're saying. Yeah, but, like, the <laughs> joints are so tight. Like, he'll just... He'll put legs like that. He just holds himself up like that. It's <laughs> really... Like, the, the build quality here is phenomenal. Now, he looks very similar in height to the Optimus Prime that you showed before. On uh, yeah, so he's just... He's about a head taller than that one. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Which I, I think... Uh, Scalm is probably a bit off. I don't think we saw him stand next to each other in the movie, right. really. So I don't mind too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's... As a, stand, as a standalone piece, and as something that goes alongside the Bumblebee and the Prime, fantastic. Like yeah. it's, it's just brilliant design. <laughs> you know, I think everyone sort of fell in love with it when we first saw it, and yeah, yeah, three zeros captured that perfectly. Nice. He was the best part of that movie, actually, when he said "Ravage eject." Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think I was the only person in the cinema that let it yet let out a little yelp. <laughs> like that's amazing. Like yeah, that's like so good. I, I wasn't like I wasn't like as over the moon with a G one scene as some people were because it wasn't right as big a part of my childhood, you know, but like, yeah, yeah, that, the, it's still, it's still just bloody awesome. And yeah. <laughs> yeah having, a, having a proper representation of that is, yeah, it's really worthwhile. That's a great acquisition. <laughs> right. Jason, talk to us. Have we lost Jason? No, he's stunned. He must be stunned by how good the, uh, I was, I was on, I was on mute because the dog was barking. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Doug was obviously agreeing again. Yeah, yeah, no, Doug, Doug likes okay. to throw a supportive bark in here and there. Um, uh, no, uh, so Tony, do you have anything to show us this week, acquisition? -wise? Yeah, I do. It's it's a bit oh, sad though. Sorry. Yeah, it's a bit Come sad. On. But anyway, look, here we go. Now, you may go. Hang on a sec. Didn't you already talk about this? Haven't you already acquired this? And I'd say, actually, yes, I did acquire this, and I've acquired it again because of my addiction. Uh, again, walked past the store, came out, saw it there, and I was like, mm, I cannot get it because I've already got one. Went in and got it again. So this is what you're looking at here is a man on the precipice of admitting his addiction to plastic. Hmm. Uh, 
I see. Yeah, mm. sure. You know, like I, res- I respect that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I, I I question you guys though. So, do you guys have the right staying power that if you were in that same situation, you could let, I ge- literally I just walk past? I generally will not buy a figure again. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll, find, no. I'll find something else to buy. The only time I've done <laughs> but, that but was I, for um, the Legend Shockwave that came out in Combine Awards. Right. I think I, I think I only have the Takara one left now, but I managed to pick up every single color version of that because yeah, uh, see, those are slight, those it was combined with Shockwave. Thing. Like yeah, it, that's it a variation also, though. About yeah. half the price of this thing. Yes. So, yes. I, I, I don't think I've bought the exact same figure multiple times though. Yeah, I don't know why I did it. Yeah, I just felt like I was missing out somehow or there was some kind of like bargain, but it was exactly the same price as the first one I got. <laughs> so is I it, don't get it. Is it. I mean, it, was it was it a, a reaction to seeing the $79 G1 Prime with no trailer on the shelf? Like, did you see that and just go, fuck that, I'm going to buy the hot rod instead? <laughs> so I'm going to get the guy that killed Optimus Prime. That's what I'm going to yeah. do. <laughs> just out of spot. Exactly. No, you're, 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 hot, you're hot rod, not Megatron. Ah. <laughs> nice, nice. So anyway, that that's my sad addiction, guys. I, I don't know why I did this again, but I did it, and um, Fair it's enough. making me Fair feel enough. weird. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna flash up another Studio Series 86 box that I acquired this week. Is the big guy Grimlock? He's the first. Where am I going? I'm gonna put my mouth over this side because the microphone is down here. Uh, this guy is the first big leader bot that we've seen in. Uh, a long time. In fact, that may not be true because there's been genuine leader-sized bots in the Studio Series, but I don't care. Um, so, uh, again, we're in Studio Series anyway. So, it's the first time I've seen a giant Transformer that's you know, bigger than a Voyager and not a Commander class in a really long time. He's a fantastic, like, modernization, re- modern representation of a G1 Grimlock. Uh, he's got the he's got the you know the big chunky head sculpt and the the visor and everything on there. Um, like there's, this, this just, it just screams perfection as far as the, you know, being an update and a, and a, a, a reimagining of the G1 figure. So he's fantastic. He's, he is a really big chunky boy as well. And in fact, my, Max, look at that. Like I can, I can do that to oh. this guy as well. Ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> you know? What's a, a third of the price of Sandwave too? I know. I know. Oh, I, I can turn, oh, I can turn a figure big. upside down. Yes, <laughs> I can turn a figure upside down and hold him by his by his leg, and uh, you know for, I I don't have to pay so much for that. Tony's got one in uh, got one in alt mode up there for us as well. Yeah, so thank you very say, much. Look there. At this I have, guy. Good look I got to say I haven't actually transformed this one yet. He's just, I'm just too impressed with him sitting on the on the desk in robot mode. I tend to display my transformers in robot mode anyway. Yeah, there's so much joy to come from this though, Chase. Like you, you'll you'll really enjoy it once you get to properly transform this guy. It was so good, and it made me actually forget about the Power of the Primes version that I've got on the shelf somewhere. Uh, oh, I had forgot forgotten about that too until you mentioned it. Why'd you there do you that? Go. Now, you, now, now, you, now you have to sell it. Why'd you exactly. make me think about that? <laughs> no, he's a great toy. So good. And what did you do with Wheelie? Did you put him uh, under the wheel of your car or under your under your boot or something like that? He's here Where he somewhere. Uh, no, he, fe- he, he, he fell off something. Um, like, he's, um, Completely useless wait, wait. piece of plastic, that guy. I have to put him, put, put my screen back up. Like, you can, so what I figured out, right, is that he's got ball joints on his shoulders. So you can, you can pose him like this. Uh, where's my camera? There. You can pose him like this, and it looks like he's like doing something with the slingshot, but there's no slingshot on it. So like, you just have to use your imagination. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, yeah, it's dumb. I don't. Do you I, know what I, I found out, Jace? You can actually pull that slingshot out of his little hand. <gasps> really? Yeah. Are you kidding? Oh my god, no. you can too. Yeah, there you wow. go. Now you've got a little why. I don't. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> So maybe it's just like it's a slingshot with a bunch of plastic <laughs> attached to it, and the slingshot. Yeah, you know, do you know, do you know, it's just an adult that Titans return wheelie. No, t- <laughs> Tony. Seriously, you've increased the articulation count of this figure by fifty percent. I have. We should take that yeah. to Hasbro. <laughs> I think. I think. I think. Someone at Hasbro has just been sitting there all the all this time, just going, "No one's discovered the slingshot yet." <laughs> so disappointed. <laughs> yeah, and, and now you've made their day. You've made their day, which yeah. may, might mean that Hasbro might answer that email that I sent them the other day. We'll see. There you go. This um, podcast episode was brought to you by the letter Y from Wheelie Slingshot. 
Uh, yeah. All right. Um, that is about. That's about it. We are a little bit over time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, rush through a little bit of a little bit of club news at the end. As I mentioned earlier in the show, we are attending Oz Comic Con, and while we've been talking about new acquisitions, I have got up the absolutely stunning Netflix Gold Bug that has been customized from Netflix Mumblebee by uh, M's Toy Customs. Uh, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say friend of the group he's a lovely lovely person Michael Fashe in Melbourne he also he also is doing a live stream customizing challenge in the coming weeks so he'll be announcing that he'll be announcing the details of that soon um, and here without further ado there is a this is a this is a this is a, a money can't buy figure because you literally can't buy this figure you're going to have to enter our raffle to win it it is a Netflix gold bug He's been painted with limited edition gold tinsel paint, uh, and the head sculpt is actually a resin cast from Generations Goldfire, which has been brought over and placed on a ball joint so that he can actually he can replace Bumblebee's head. So, um, Goldbug looks just astonishingly good. He lo- he looks like he would be a Generations Select figure with shiny paint and all sorts of things like that. Um, and That's proper impressive. He's he's very he's he's just as poseable as as any other Bumblebee figure, and uh, he also is and also just look at look at the shininess of the blue on the legs there. See where see how that's reflecting uh, reflecting like that. Like it's just it's just stunning. I, I'm I'm in love with this figure, um, and uh, and yeah, and so he also can transform. That's his uh, that's his his alt mode, his VW alt mode. Um, Looks fantastic, and there is a comparison shot of him next to the original in um, in uh, Netflix Bowie. So that, that gold will... tinsel color just really pops. Oh, if you if you're it? listening to this podcast, I encourage you to go and actually look at the video, so you can actually see this thing. It, it looks amazing. Yeah, Michael's done such a such an amazing job customizing mm-hmm. the paint job on this figure. He's he's very very meticulous with his customs, and like he's left he's left. No, he's left no stone unturned, or no no corner, or no piece undone, uh, when it comes to the the paint job in this bubble. It looks fantastic, and uh, you will be able to purchase tickets in a, a, a charity raffle that we're going to be running for it. All proceeds from all ticket sales will go straight to the Royal Children's Hospital Foundation in their Good Friday appeal. So we will be running this and drawing it before the end of March. Um, so yeah, keep an eye, keep an eye on the group. We're gonna we're gonna put um, ticket sales up soon, and uh, we'd also we're also going to try to get ticket sales to go outside of the group and hopefully even go internationally as well because there's been a little bit of attention from this uh, from this custom on Twitter from people overseas, uh, rightly so as well. Looks fantastic. So that's coming up soon. We will have him on display at Oz Comic Con next week in Sydney. That's March 6th to 7th. If you'd like to come down to the Sydney uh, Sydney showgrounds, come see us on Saturday or Sunday. There are three sessions on Saturday, so it's not a normal convention. You can't just sort of come up and walk around. Um, there's COVID safety measures that have to be uh, undertaken. So there's a morning, there's a lunchtime, and an afternoon session for Oz Comic Con on Saturday. And then there's a morning and lunchtime session on Sunday. Um, so we will have this on the stand. We'll have Unicron on the stand. Uh, there's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of things that we're planning. Um, but we're not quite sure whether we can do them uh, just yet. But um, the Netflix Gold Bug will definitely be a highlight of the stand. And uh, I think that's the end of the show. The, does anyone have anything that they would like to add before we uh, before we go? Doug, no, Doug no. does. Doug, okay. Doug's got something. What's he got? Doug, Doug's <laughs> got opinions to voice, and you know he deserves to be heard. <laughs> uh, if you're watching along with the live record, thank you for checking us out. Uh, a few people have been watching along. Thank you for donating your time on a Friday night. Uh, you can find out more about these stories and more. You'll find links to them at uh, the sh- in the show notes posted to the Transformers Weekly Facebook page and the Podbean site. You can get in touch with us in Transformers Collectors Club Australia on Facebook, um, and uh, there's also you know there's there's various ways to get in touch with us on the 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 facebook page australian transformers weekly and the podbean site which is transformersweekly.podbean.com we are a production of transformers collectors club australia a registered club in victoria run by volunteers who donate their friday nights and their time and money to make the club better for everyone our goal is to connect transformers fans around the country we do it by engaging the collecting community and attending things like oz comic con uh, you can find out more information, including affordable yearly membership options to show your support at transformerscca.com. Uh, that is it for us. So uh, 
I'm not going to promise that we're going to do an episode next week because I don't quite know the bump in and bump out schedule for Oz Comic Con, but we'll try. <laughs> we'll see how we go for Friday night, and uh, if nothing happens on Friday night, then we might we might have to skip a week or we might try to do something live from the uh, live from the stand. We'll see how we go, but um, we'll be back with more Transformers news in the fullness of time. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> well Goodbye. said. Thanks.